Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome uh, to the series which is going on with Media and Entertainment Skills Council and Global Media Education Council. Uh, this is a creative warrior workshop powered by Vidya Dan, where we are bringing you a lot of uh, good content on journalism, on media and entertainment related uh, courses and uh, media and entertainment related information and uh, webinars to you. So today we have a very amazing topic, new trends in advertising. Advertising, which is a booming industry and going uh, uh, going beyond expectations every day. We have with us Dr. Tanu Dang today to explain about the new trends in advertising. Now, when we talk about the trends in advertising, of course, uh, Dr. Dang will be happy to inform uh, that there is a lot of career opportunity as well. I'll take this privilege to introduce Dr. Tanu Dang as an innovative and inquisitive academician, constantly engaged in teaching and learning activities in the field of development communication, advertising and PR. A gold medalist from Punjabi University Patiala, she has been teaching for past 18 years. She has been working as an assistant professor in Department of Journalism and Mass Communication at Khwaja Mainuddin Chishti Language University in Lucknow for past nine years. Prior to which, she was a lecturer in Department of Journalism and Mass Com, Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj University in Kanpur. An avid reader, researcher, and thinker, Dr. Dang has participated and presented research paper in more than 30 national and five international seminars and contributed extensively to several reputed journals. She was two edited books. She has two edited books, which is Role of Media in Promoting Right of Education and Inclusive Growth of Minority Women Through ICT to her credit. A lot of things that I can talk about, Dr. Dang, but let's hear it from her. Dr. Dang, we welcome you here on this platform. Thank you so very much. Thanks a lot uh, for this wonderful, wonderful introduction. And uh, the topic that we are covering today is uh, very, very close to my heart because advertising is something that we see every day around us. It is something that we consume uh, either knowingly or unknowingly. And uh, therefore, whenever I talk about advertising, you know, everything starts coming in front of my eyes, everything that we see every day. So uh, to begin with, I will be sharing a presentation and uh, all those who join us, I would encourage them to ask questions if they have any in between the presentation also, because I want to keep the session as interactive as possible. Uh, so I'll just share my presentation. Yes, ma'am. I hope you will be covering all the modes of advertising as well. Uh, basically, I'll be focusing more on uh, the new trends because that is what I think the students would be more keen on uh, learning and knowing. But right. in uh, discussing those trends, we are definitely going to talk about all the modes of advertising as well. So to begin with, uh, to start, uh, you know, this uh, entire presentation, I think the first thing that we need to talk about is this one quote, which really, really makes a lot of sense even today. Uh, this was uh, given in the book, Advertising and Account Planning uh, by Larry D. Keller. And he says that advertising business is changing rapidly and we all cannot agree more to it. It is nearly impossible to keep up with the trends and new direction. Yet one large part of management is to understand where the business is going so that you can be poised to capitalize on the change. Now, this definition, you know, or, or this statement that he gave actually sums up the entire situation of advertising today. There are so many platforms coming up. The platforms that, that we are using today are something that we could not have even thought about five years ago. Uh, like the jobs are changing in every five years. So even, I mean, the platforms, not even five years, they're changing every year. We have new things coming up. We have new platforms coming up. When we were using Facebook, we never thought we are going to interact through Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter as well. But we do have those platforms and all these different platforms have different kind of engagement with the audiences. 
So this uh, changing environment needs to be assessed very clearly and on a daily basis to understand what are the trends which are taking place in the market so that the advertisers can take leverage from it. So this entire presentation that I'm going to share with you today, we are majorly, I'm assuming that most of the people who join us today, even the students who are going to join us know uh, the basics of advertising. So what we are going to talk about are the trends which are happening around you so that after this presentation also, when you are listening to, uh, you know, FM or you're watching television or you're using internet, you can identify these changed advertising paradigms which are happening around you. So these are the things that I'll be talking about. Now, um, to begin with, what is happening? Why is advertising changing? And why are we talking about this new trends? You know, what is happening in the market right now? The first and foremost difference, which all the youngsters who've joined us today know, is that you have become the content creator. It's no more the marketer who's actually providing content. It is, it is the user who is not only creating content, but also sharing it online. So there is a vast shift from the consumer to the user. And this user, you know, is very fickle. And that user can be easily manipulated with good content and made to try a new product just because it has some good offer or it has some, you know, new value to it. Or maybe everybody in the peer group is using it. So this new user is very different from the breed of customers that we used to have earlier. I remember my dad used to buy a shoe for 999 rupees from Bata. And no matter what happened, he was always going to that brand. But that is not happening today anymore. We are always ready to make experiments. We are always going to try new products. So that has become a big challenge for the advertisers and for the brands as well. So now the new consumer has the choice to search. We all do that before we buy any product. He can subscribe to your services. He can unsubscribe to your newsletter. He can like or dislike whatever you've posted on the online platform. He can comment, share, or even create his own version of information. I'm sure many of us do online buying. And when we do online buying, many of us also like to share our experiences of, you know, how we found the product. So once we are doing that. We are actually the creators of the content. I, am, I have seen, I mean, whenever I am buying anything from Amazon, I'm sure everybody of you must be doing the same thing that we check out, you know, the uh, reviews of the people. And we, if, if there are any videos or photographs posted, we actually trust that more than what has been posted by the brand itself. So this is a big change which is happening. And that's why advertising needs to change itself to meet these changing needs of the consumers. Next important change that has come in the market is demassification of audience, which means there is no one size fits all kind of a rule which was there earlier. Uh, if Titan was selling something or some kind of watches, it was common for all the buyers. But now, you know, you, there is so much of variety of buyers and there is so much of demassification that you have to actually cater to niche audiences and create content that actually fulfills their particular needs. So that is also a big shift that has come in the market. Next important change is that there is um, more shift from media to content. Earlier, we were more keen on studying that which is the media that the people are using. And we used to uh, actually see the metrics of how these medias are getting popular or how they are being consumed by the people. But right now, the, the, there is a big change. You know, Now, content is more important. We, we've always said that content is the king, no matter what you're communicating. I, be it advertising, be it public relation, or be it any form of entertainment media, content is what sells. So this changing game of content is another concern for the advertisers. So the advertising has to think out of the box to meet these changing needs, you know. Then from mono media to multimedia. Now we have so many things that we can combine with a simple text. You know, we can use visuals, we can use videos, we can use animations. And we can also use AR and VR technologies to support our advertising content. So this sea change of technology has changed the way content is created and delivered to the people. Then another big change is earlier, we, whenever we used to tie up with media houses, we used to tie up for a particular period of time that this ad will be you know, displayed for a particular period of time. 
but now in the time that we are living we actually want real time engagement for the consumers so it's not a question of whether this campaign is going to run for 6 months or 3 months or 1 year we have to revise the content and the campaign after every one year based on the feedback that we are getting from the people so the campaigning and the planning is not a long term process most of the time it is a short term process where it needs to be reviewed and it has to filled in it has to be filled in with real time experiences that people brands or you know anybody is having so there is more real time interaction with the audience so this is another big change which has impacted the advertising market one big change and challenge at the same time is multiplicity of channels where to advertise how to advertise when to advertise and with what content has become a new challenge and that is why uh, it has also become important for advertising to be omnipresent earlier it was easier that you know you were a brand targeting the youngsters and you selected fm radio over any other platform but nowadays if i talk about me or if i talk about anybody who is listening to me right now we are using multiple platforms i don't think we are sticking to any one platform throughout the day we are looking at our mobile phones we are making online searches we are probably going to amazon and flipkart at the same time in the meanwhile when we are sitting in the room idle we are probably turning on the tv or looking at the ott platforms and also watching advertising which is there so there are so many multiple medias that we are assessing throughout the day or using throughout the day even uh, even you know we may not be the traditional newspaper reading or magazine reading person but when we are waiting in a saloon or waiting in a queue and if there's a magazine kept next to us we might just flip through the pages and see the advertisement which is there or i think i mean for me it is there so maybe it is there for other people as well that when we are traveling we often buy magazines or books that we plan to read on our way so these you know uh, the multiplicity of channels that we are using throughout the day has definitely changed how advertising is operating nowadays because now you have to be omnipresent because you cannot be sure where your audience will be and you have to catch them real young and you have to catch them real soon before your competitor catches them so that has increased the challenge and the fun of it i will say uh, another big thing is that earlier our markets were very segregated but now we are in a global connected world which means if i am selling my product and if i am in an established brand the idea that i'm selling has to be consistent globally so we are now targeting more towards global communication global trends and global marketing uh, although uh, there is a lot of local trend also catching up there is a lot of um, bilingual advertisement also catching up that is definitely something which is going on but when we are thinking about uh, planning the entire strategy then definitely a uh, global platform you know global marketing and global trends really matter a lot what are the other uh, changes that we are observing around us you know now we are focused more on experiential uh, buying which means before you buy the product you would like to experience it and there are so many technologies supporting this particular experiential uh, you know learning for you uh, you can find i mean i remember there was a time when we used to be very happy finding a sachet of shampoo or toothpaste or you know a cream on the newspaper stuck on the advertisement on the newspaper but nowadays you know with lens cart you can have one example lens cart is one of them where you can actually uh have the different uh, eye glasses tried on on your face virtually and uh, similarly you can try clothes virtually on different brands and different platforms so this has changed the entire game of advertising because we want to experience the things before we actually buy them so that's a big big change that the advertisers are trying to cater to another big thing is from distribution to access which means that earlier we used to look out for targets and you know we used to uh, advertise so that we attract those targets or make them buy our products but right now as i told them as i told you earlier that we need to catch them young and catch them before our competitors do uh, it simply means that rather than waiting for the audience now we go and find them so Uh, we have to look at all the algorithms we have to study the data we have to do a lot of data mining and identify where our audience is at that particular time and deliver the message right away 
So this is another big change which has taken advertising to an altogether new level. From one way, interactive interactivity to community. We all know that uh, you know we are uh, all very social, particularly when it comes to India. Uh, we still uh, uh, actually go by word of mouth. I've seen that. I've felt that. I've experienced that. I've even studied that. That in spite of all the technologies and all the convincing claims made by the brands, we still like and uh, we actually go out and ask people about reviews. We read the reviews. We ask people before making purchases. So we, what has happened now is that there are small communities which are there online. You know, communities supporting the brands, communities against the brands. So this brand community is also a new concept that the advertisers are trying to cater to, and they are also trying to keep interaction alive among these communities so that the brand affinity and brand brand loyalty stays on with the brand. Uh, then again, we are going from linear to hypertext. Whatever uh, messages that you receive, you know, you see a QR code, so you can. Uh, scan that QR code and you can be directed to the website or maybe you will find some offer that you, you know, link that you click and you instantly get a discount. Or on certain websites, when you're reading content, you might find some hyperlink that takes you to the website and gives you a free sample of the product. So we are all driving through this seamless uh, online, you know, uh, brands taking us from one page to another or one content to another. We are guided very beautifully by the brands and the brands are doing that work really well. Uh, another thing is converting data into knowledge. As I already said that uh, there is so much of data which is uh, because we are on social media most of the time and most of the people are uh, even and uh, I was just you know reading something in the morning and I was just uh, um, uh, actually, I was reminded of this fact that we've all experienced that after lockdown, you know, the way we use social media or the way we use our mobile phones and the internet has changed drastically. And uh, a new concept has come up, which is like uh, earlier it was, we used to use social media, we uh, use social media for relaxation, for entertainment. But right now we also use it because of frustrations that we have in our lives. We do not sleep. We get sleep deprived and at the night we are looking at our smartphones, looking at the reels or looking at different offers by different brands. So that is the new thing which is happening. And uh, also during the lockdown, many people who were not using technology earlier, the elderly people, the retired people, have all learned the techniques of using it and they have also joined the online community now. So the base of people or the number of people who are using online platforms and who are on the social media has definitely gone up, which has created more and more data and it has become easier as well as challenging for the advertisers to identify which data to use and how to actually carve a useful and powerful strategy by this data, which is easily available now. Now, these are a few trends that I'll be talking about now, which refers to what is happening in the market nowadays. You know, what are the new trends which are, uh, which is the main area that I was focusing on today? Is there any question? I can hear someone. So is there any question? Uh, not now, ma'am. Please proceed. Okay. 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 So uh, as I was discussing that uh, since we'll be focusing majorly on the new trends, one of the most common trends that is uh, happening and that particularly emerged during the lockdown period. Uh, it's not that it wasn't existing earlier, but it was strengthened during the lockdown period because more and more brands wanted to come together and experiment new ways of marketing things. Uh, Co-branding basically means when two brands come together and launch a different service product or anything which is a win-win situation for both the brands. So it's nothing for them to lose, but collectively they use each other's resources space and uh, their, uh, you know, uh, their actually customers to leverage upon the situation. So one very good example of that is Unacademy's Quota Factory. Many of you must have seen this series and this series in uh, producing this series, basically Unacademy teamed up with TVF in 2019 
uh, and this was the first of its kind combination when an educational group came with a, a video production group and produced something which was related to education and in a very different way. They questioned the entire uh, IIT race and JE race and that was a very different concept that they came up with and it was a win-win situation for both the groups. So uh, it was the hot, hot seller, you know, it was the best uh, seller of its time and in 2019 it created waves among the OTT platform viewers. So another example of such co-branding is Spotify and Uber. Uh, they both collaborated and created a specific uh, musical list, you know, the co-branding after the co-branding, they created a musical list where the uh, users of Uber could could actually listen to their uh, Spotify playlist while they travel. Now, this was again an example of very different uh, kind of brands coming together collectively to offer something which uh, they do not relate to, but giving better experiences to the people. And this was a win-win situation again, because it didn't take anything from any of the brands. In fact, it helped one brand to leverage upon the customers of the other brand and made both brands have a win-win situation. Some other examples are like IPL and YouTube collaborated for their, uh, you know, promotional rights. And then uh, uh, Nike and uh, Apple, they produced uh, different products together. Uh, HDFC and IDEA also collaborated to have special credit cards for the, uh, for the people. Uh, then Taco Bell has also co uh, collaborated with uh, Pizza Hut and uh, through Pizza Hut, uh, Taco Bell is selling its product. So many such co-branding initiatives are becoming a common thing these days and it is becoming very popular nowadays for the brands to collaborate and co-brand uh, so that they can actually access each other's market sphere. Now another thing which is uh, which was as I told you content has always been the king but nowadays if you look at the advertising opportunities which are coming in the field most of them are for content writers because content has become very, very important, particularly because of the digital media. Since the digital media has expanded, the content area has expanded as well. There are all the, all the websites, you know, all the brands need people to write for their websites. The brands need people to manage their pages on Instagram. Uh, even uh, the companies, you know, they need, need uh, people to actually write content for them on a daily basis so that the engagement with the customers is maintained. So this trend started around 2003 with the birth of social media when Facebook and Twitter came into being. And since then, content marketing has become uh, the most powerful tool of storytelling. And uh, if you've uh, heard about content, you must have heard about the term storytelling. And when it comes to advertising, I think everything is about storytelling. No matter how your product is, how good your product is, if you cannot relate it to people through effective storytelling, then definitely the advertising does not produce or yield the desired results. So that is something which is very, very um, selling these days. And we are not just talking about storytelling in advertising. In every field, even when I'm uh, teaching, we are what we are doing is we are storytelling. I mean, uh, you must have found that in your day-to-day -day lives also that people who relate to their day-to-day -day experiences and whatever they're talking about makes always their talk becomes more interesting and you are more keen on listening to them. So storytelling has become a very, very important component of advertising these days and content specifically has always been the king. Now, this is one example that comes to your uh, my mind and I think everybody else's mind would be Amul. If you've seen the billboards, there must be some billboards placed in whichever city you're residing in or in newspapers also. Their advertisements or their content is always very topical. Uh, recently, you know, see, I've also placed one on the right hand side where Amul is actually uh, celebrating Modiji's birthday. So every time anything happens, you will always find Amul coming up with a quirky uh, solid content which actually makes you connect with the brand so amul whenever i think of content amul is the first one that comes to my mind and i think everybody must have noticed how over the years amul has survived that uh, content marketing area very very well coming from billboards to digital area it has uh, still maintained its quirkiness in all the communication it makes 
another brand which is not very old but has actually created some really really good content and has been the talk of the town and has been very very popular on twitter is zomato and if you've seen the ads or the single liners that uh, you know not, uh, the notifications that you get on your mobile phones all of them are very very interesting very very timely and most of the time connected with the current situation i remember i received so many messages and notifications from zomato during the lockdown period telling people to stay inside their homes and just when the lockdown was removed zomato was the first one to again ask people to stay in their homes but they were ready for delivery so they were telling people that you stay in your homes and we will bring you whatever you want to eat because you haven't had anything from outside for a long long time and recently in 2019 they had a very funny tweet jisme uh, i mean in which they said guys kabhi kabhi ghar ka khana bhi kha lena chahiye that tweet became so very popular that many brands picked up on that tweet and retweeted it in their own ways and many a times zomato has been doing that and many other brands pick up the tweets of zomato and retweeted with their own version there is also one more image of such kind that i have posted on the right where zomato uh, when facebook said that it will be known by meta now uh, zomato said i we pitched renaming our brand to zomata but the idea was rejected at once so here underneath you can see that palaji also started uh, you know picked up on that tweet and uh, then it wrote have you ever met a biscuit that dips you know uh, that goes so well with chai so uh, this is again another thing where parle ji uh, picked up on zomato's content and zomato has been very very popular in that uh, the example that i have given on the left side if you can see the screen then zomato as i told you when it wrote guys kabhi kabhi ghar ka khana bhi kha lena chahiye youtube retweeted with guys kabhi kabhi raat 3 baje phone side par rakh kar so jana chahiye so many many a times if you actually follow zomato on twitter if you're not doing that and if you're interesting in interested in advertising i think you should follow zomato's account on twitter for sure because their messages are so apt so um, you know immediate and so much uh, relevant to what is happening around you that you will always find a string of new things coming up with uh, zomato Uh, then another very uh, nice example is flipkart all the advertisements that you've seen of flipkart there's so many examples that i can quote but obviously because we have restrictions of time so i've picked up a few examples that you can resonate with if you've seen the flipkart ad you will always find that they are also very connecting and the content is also very appropriate and apt you must have seen the small children who played different characters in the flipkart ad it was very very compelling and the way children were used in the advertisement made it made it even more uh, interesting for the people to watch some other brands which are very very quirky and very very uh, relevant in the kind of content that they post on their social media one of them is ola uh, again you must have seen several interesting ads by ola where it not only talks about its product but also connect with the customers if you remember that after uh, you know after lockdown once we started using the uh, ola and uber cabs again ola was the first one which actually told you how their cabs are uh, sanitized and how they are kept safe for you and they also had one ad if i remember it well where they said that before you leave your seat you make sure that you are leaving the uh, cab clean for the next user especially due to covid so there were certain things that they uh, always you know try to portray in their advertisement which tells the people that they are not just promoting their brand but they are actually concerned about their customers another very um, nice uh, brand which always is good with content is hp another new brand is oreo um uh, not a new brand but definitely oreo is a new product but the content they've been sharing is also very very interesting i remember one of the ads where june 21 is the longest day and uh, they you know introduced a very long packet of the oreo uh, biscuits and they promoted it by saying that because it's a long long day then definitely you need a longer packet of oreo to support that so a uh, competing zomato is swiggy which is also very um, prompt with the advertising very uh, interesting uh, content is posted by swiggy also 
so these are a few examples of good content and as i told you that no matter the platforms might change the advertising brands might change but content forever and ever remains the king mama i have okay. a question yeah. when you were talking about uh, can we go to the previous slide please yeah yeah sure when uh, you are talking about the content uh, on social media handles right yeah now uh, if we talk about the the old times or i'll say 20 years 30 years back when one tagline remains forever yeah what is they are uh, changing so promptly like for example of amul yeah they have a specific tagline but the taste they, of india they come up with another one yeah uh, so how effective it is like of course uh, in the coming era like in this time you have mentioned uh, different platforms using different uh, way of content but uh, do you think this is going to continue uh, yeah uh, the example that i'm going to give right now pooja i think you will be able to relate with it and if anybody else who's been in the 90s uh of the same age group that i am then probably you will be able to relate with it if you remember the nirma ad jaya um sabki pasand nirma if you remember that ad have you heard that pooja i've i've heard of it yes yeah so uh if that if you uh, listen to that ad they tried to use it again by using new models and new celebrities they actually played the same old song but that lost a lot of impact because the times were changing and people were not resonating with the same tune and message and uh, you know the the tagline which used to be very very popular during that time similarly if you remember lijit papar lijit papar has continued with that tagline uh and even amul has continued with the tagline but with other efforts that amul is making it is keeping its brand relevant even if the tagline is not but many a times brand realize that the older messages that they had their tagline had been delivering does not resonate with the new audiences that they are catering to for example bata if you've seen bata has actually given a new tagline that uh, kya ye bata hai and why they had to do that because bata has always been associated with school shoes and we had to change that image and actually bring bata into a broader picture and say no no now bata is something that celebrities prefer and it offers anything and everything under the sun and not just school shoes so many a times i think it is the need of the hour to change the content because if you uh, you uh, there might be some old songs that you like and some of the people might not like the remixes of the old songs because they believe that the sanctity of that old good song has been lost because of the remix thing but many a times those old songs are actually becoming more popular and the younger generation is also remembering those songs because of the remixed version so i think it is both ways sometimes it it is good for the brand like for example uh, ariel might have changed several taglines but what i remember most is dag acche hain because that resonated with something which is very very close to your heart and uh, that is what i think matters in the long run so many a times brands change their visibility change their caption change their logo also and change their tagline to suit the preferences of the newer generation and to fit into the market because there is so much of competition and then think that it is very imperative to change with the time so many a times and in fact most of the times it works for the brands but sometimes it also doesn't work for the brands i hope i've answered the question yes ma'am thank you okay so uh, this is another very interesting example showing you uh, how different you know you have to be when you're thinking about advertising uh, uh, you know fanta actually launched a tasteable print advertisement which was first of its kind in 2013 where they launched this one ad that you can see on the right side of the page where uh, you could actually tear this ad you know in the magazine they placed this entire newsletter kind of a sheet in a cellophane and it was there in the magazine along with their ad and people could actually take it out and 
eat a part of this paper and taste the new flavor of Fanta. Now, this was first of its kind experience, even before we had uh, augmented reality or and virtual reality technology coming up. So they were the ones who made this first experiment. And then later on, uh, now we are all, all talking about edible bottles and edible plates and edible spoons. But in 2015, KFC was the first one to introduce an edible coffee mug, which you could actually eat after having your coffee, because that was the time when we actually started getting aware about uh, the environment and being more environment friendly and environment conscious and reduce our use of plastics and paper. And that is when it came up with this idea. Now, many brands are taking, you know, a cue of this and they are introducing something like this. But uh, KFC and uh, Fanta were the first ones to make these kind of experiments. So why I shared this particularly is that, uh, you know, when we talk about the first part of it, uh, the Fanta ad, you have to actually think out of the box because whatever everybody else is doing, you have to think of something which goes much beyond that to leave an impact in the mind of the people. And this one Fanta advertisement, which was launched in 2013, which was edible, is a part of several case studies even today. Similarly, the, uh, the you know, KFC experiment in 2015 of introducing an edible cup was also something which was first of its kind because that actually showed people that the brand is concerned about the environment. And after COVID period specifically, it has become all the more important for the brands to be globally um, responsible because that's what people are expecting the brands to be. And I was uh, reading the statistics one day and the statistics were showing that many of the people shifted their brand preferences during COVID just because they felt that their brands were not behaving in a responsible way during the COVID period. So this has become a big point of concern for the consumers and therefore it has become inevitable for the brands to uh, you know have packaging have products which actually go in with the organic need of the hour and which fulfill the health requirements of the people and which are according to a uh, nature preserving mode you know, a uh, decorum which is uh, being followed across the globe. So these are the changes and this is the out-of-the-box experiments that the brands are constantly making to keep the people, um, you know, uh, interested in their brand and engaged with their brand. Now, these are a few more trendsetters, a new um, few more experiments which are happening around in the advertising world. One definitely is personalized content. I don't think I need to tell you what it means. If I give you certain examples, you will definitely relate it yourself that whenever you turn on Facebook, if there's anything that you've searched for on Amazon or Flipkart, it starts showing on your post, in, your, in your Facebook uh, feeds as well. Similarly, it starts showing in your mails as well. So uh, many brands are using the artificial intelligence and algorithms to actually find about their uh, audience preferences. This is one example that I've uh, put on the right side, which is a page of uh, Amazon in which it has, it, uh, whenever you open Amazon, it recommends what are the kind of products you might be looking for, uh, the kind of books that might interest you, the kind of utensils that might interest you. And it's all based on your past history of shopping, buying and viewing. So many brands are using this data. However, there are definitely privacy issues which are in question. And uh, many people are questioning that why do brands, uh, right now, if you have ever downloaded an app, if you have not taken care of that uh, recently, you should start noticing that, that whenever you open something now online on or any go on any website, earlier, every time you visited a website, the website had the permission to, uh, you know, capture your data. But now it asks you whether you are interested in cookies or whether you will be willing to choose the cookies or will willing to share the information that you want to go to give to the website. But what happens most of the time is that, that due to lack of time, we say accept all when we move on to the page. The better option would be to have some settings of the cookies so that our entire information is not captured by the algorithms. Similarly, whenever you're downloading any app on your mobile phone, if you see that it asks for permission nowadays uh, that it, it will track your activities, you know, 
and many a times we just ignore it we say okay okay to everything because we are in a hurry to use the app but i think nowadays because so many regulations are being put into place we should be very vigilant about the kind of agreements that we are okaying to because until and unless we are vigilant about what we are approving of we cannot actually question google for taking all our data because we have been given the firewalls but if we don't use them then it is up to us so but definitely many brands because we are yesers or yes doers we always tick the yes option and move ahead so all our data is captured by the brands and that on the basis of that it is delivering us all the personalized content about what we want to buy netflix uh, you know makes movies and series recommendations on the basis of what you watched before uh, i recently read an article which was very very interesting which told me that if you are listening to songs on spotify they have also developed a technique through which uh, based on the songs you are listening they will identify whether you are in a good mood or a bad mood and accordingly they will suggest you songs so even in amazon uh, one example i've given you on the right side and so many other social media giants facebook also uses algorithms to see uh, your you know um, your search history and whatever you're looking for or the kind of discussions you're making online and delivers you content accordingly if you've seen the kind of people that you're connected with with or the pages uh, for example if for four, two to three days you uh, start uh, looking for some meditation you know uh, sites or maybe it comes in your facebook feed and you visit that site after that you will keep on getting similar feeds in your uh, facebook and in other platforms as well so uh, and if you try to be cautious about it and on instagram you're looking at different kind of stuff and on facebook you're looking at different kind of stuff then you will find that the algorithms will get confused and they'll start giving you different options on different platforms so this is uh, how brands are using our personalized data to deliver personalized content to us and as we are most of us are i will not say everybody but most of us are impulsive buyers we often fall in the trap of the brands and buy the things that we don't need or subscribe to the pages that we don't want or follow content that actually doesn't interest us another very common thing is diy videos uh most of the brands they are you know uh, using these instagram pages and youtube channels to promote their brands by uh, creating diy videos which connects people more with the brand and also tells them or gives detailed information about how the product can be used so that is also a very interesting thing that most of the people are doing these days most of the advertisers particularly another thing is experiential marketing Uh, as i have already discussed that uh, you know brands really want people to experience what they are going to uh, get from the product so now one example i had already given you before another is apple apple brand has just started a new program in which uh, you know they have been uh, running a famous photo walk in which one of the apple person uh, will take you with an iphone for a photo shoot so to help you understand that what are the different photo a uh, features of the phone that you can use probably when you buy the product another very common technique is qr codes you must have seen it everywhere uh, even on newspapers on billboards on the product packages that you get even there you get a qr code and when you scan those qr codes by earlier it was a bit difficult because you used to uh, install an app for that but nowadays it is built in the camera so everybody has the accessibility to scan the qr code and you can actually you know you so many services by uh, scanning the qr code uh, it can take you uh, to the website page it can take you to the toll free number it can take you to the feedback column of the web of, of the brand and there are so many other things and uh, while you actually uh, scan the qr code the brand gets all your data about you know how many scans have been made and how many uh, which are the locations from which from which the scans were made so uh, this is a two way process it not just helps you get more information about the brand but all, but it also helps the brand to get more information about you uh, as i already told you another major trend setter is vernacular content if you have seen newspapers or if you have different newspapers coming to your home you must have seen that whenever there is a mega sale you will find uh, hindi ads in hindi newspapers of big bazaar and you will find english ads in english newspaper similarly in other parts of the country where different languages are spoken you will find content in those particular languages 
तो नाउ इवन गूगल इज ऑल्सो गॉन इन सो मेनी लैंग्वेजेस एंड यू कैन एक्चुअली सर्च इन डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस वी नो दैट वर्नैकुलर कॉन्टेंट इज हेयर टू स्टे अर्लियर इट वॉज एडवर्टाइजिंग वॉज एन इंग्लिश बिजनेस बट नाउ इट्स नॉट दैट एनी मोर बिकॉज एडवर्टाइजिंग इज रीचिंग टू द रूरल पॉपुलेशन इट इज रीचिंग टू द टीयर टू टीयर थ्री सिटीज एंड बिकॉज वी आर बिकॉज this these cities you know actually form a lot a big part of the market which the global giants are also targeting so vernacular content is definitely taking the center stage and most of more, uh, more and more brands are actually uh, delivering content in the regional languages uh, another very common trend which if uh, all the youngsters who are connected with us right now would relate to is influencer marketing now influencer marketing we all follow influencers on instagram and youtube and they keep posting content now we see them promoting so many brands so brand collaboration is the new trend which is catching up and influencer marketing is also something which is catching up but and is here to stay because they have their own fan following and they cater to the niche markets that the brand is trying to attract and they also have several different kinds of brand brand collaborations where they either give money or the products or the freebies where uh, through which the influencers actually promote their products and honest reviews are also given by certain influencers about the brand so uh, usually you know uh, this is the new trend which is definitely catching up specifically with the youngsters and influencer marketing is definitely here to stay i noticed a very uh, recently i noticed another concept uh, in which uh, the influencer was not actually promoting the brand but what was happening was that the influencer was delivering his or her own content and the brand was just placed for example the influencer was using an hp laptop and all uh, all and everything about the hp laptop was coming on the side of the screen while the influencer was talking about whatever uh, you know whatever subject that uh, she wanted to talk about so this is a new technique which is being used and similarly as i told you that a uh, new trend la coming but then you have to think again about how to surpass this new trend because that trend becomes old very soon so you have to keep inventing new trends and keep inventing new ways to interact with the public to interact with the audience and keep them engaged another big shift is coming towards ctv and ott platforms advertising through these platforms is also getting very very popular because most of the people are watching content online and therefore online advertising is also something which is catching up and is here to stay now uh, another very uh, important thing to discuss is the changing preferences you know uh, several in several areas especially uh, post covid especially after the pandemic several things or changes have come in the market which need to be addressed very much by the advertisers the first and foremost is from care food free to conscious we all have become conscious in our buying decisions we prefer something which is healthy we prefer something which is close to nature we prefer something which is good for our um, body and mind uh, we prefer organic and apart from that we do not prefer to spend much on luxury probably now that we have had one ease of year uh, post covid then probably we see more people Uh, starting traveling again and more people going to shopping again but uh, still many people have now realized that you know decluttering is very important it's not every time important to buy anything uh, so the buying budgets you know or the spending budgets of the people have declined drastically so to uh, now you have to nudge people more for buying a particular product than you used to earlier so that is another challenge which has come up after the pandemic and that has that is one area that uh, advertisers are trying to address in whatever content they are delivering then another change is everything is becoming hyper local because uh, we definitely saw that during the pandemic period it was actually our local markets which suffered the most the brands still survived but the local markets could not or the local sellers could not so everything is becoming hyper local even the government is saying that you know you should promote local goods so because of that uh, people prefer things which are indigenous or made in the country or herbal or organic uh, so th- there is a lot of preference for that so brands are also trying to introduce such versions or variants of their products to fit into the market 
uh, then there is a connected e-commerce platform you know from from ordering to uh, tracking your delivery to getting it to your doorstep everything is seamless so people are actually looking for this seamless e-commerce experiences and the brands actually have to work a lot to maintain this thing also one thing that i would like to mention here is that uh, earlier when we used to buy something from the market we had uh, we never had so many questions and even if we had we had to wait for the next day for the shop to open so that we could go and get our product exchanged or ask something that we want to but nowadays with the online platforms which are available to us for 24 hours buying we want our queries also to be answered very quickly so nowadays customers are very much demanding from the brands if i don't like your product i want to return it even at 12 o'clock in the night and i want the brand to be responsive at 12 o'clock in the night in the night so what is happening is that brands are using chatbots because chatbots give you immediate response to your queries so technology is also becoming a very important part of advertising these days and especially the feedback mechanisms another thing is uh, the digital advertising space is increasing but we are trying to bring creativity back to it because uh, people are actually specifically in india i would say moved by emotions so uh, that, by that uh, creativity definitely is very very important in any platform of advertising that we want uh, have an impactful content uh, another trend which is coming through is the new media you know uh, we have been talking about it through the presentation but certain specific aspects of new media which are changing how products are advertised or how uh, audiences are tracked or reached or uh, products are delivered to them is changing one is search engine optimization i hope everybody must have heard about it whenever you open a website or search for something search engine optimization is a technique through which you see certain products first so it is important for the brands to be the first preference of the customers or to uh, be among the first 5 or 10 searches that are displayed on your google search so for that you need to have search engine optimization for that you need to understand what are the keywords which are selling in the market or what are the keywords that the people are looking for to make sure that when they type those keywords your product is displayed there so this is uh, very important for the brands to understand and take leverage of another thing is uh, pay per click uh, most of the brands are collaborating with websites and placing their advertisements on the website and they on uh, every time in fact they have to pay for their advertisement only when people click through the ad so that is also another technique which is being used on the new media content marketing i have already talked about social media how it is important is also something that i have discussed through the slides uh email marketing is an old technology but it is still very powerful and still used by most of the brands which are uh, you know i would say more serious brands like you will find email from most of the brands that you've ever purchased from and even the stores that you visit they take your email id and they take your mobile number and you get notifications and emails from them on a regular basis and somehow i feel that i also give this example in my class that uh, when you when it's your birthday you know you feel that the brands love you much more than your family because you get more messages from the brands than you actually get from your friends or relatives so that's how brands are actually intruding into our personal space and our personal lives uh these are a few ads because uh, there uh, no advertising uh, lecture can be complete without watching a few ads so this is the last part of uh, my presentation where i talk about a few ads which not only think out of the box but trying to bring in concepts which actually break the stereotypes uh, i will try to play one and i would like pooja uh, i would like you to tell me if you if it is playing fine all right so the first one is the cadbury ad they also had one ad last year in fact in 2020 after the covid uh, when they uh, actually uh, brought in all the local retailers and in their one ad they tried to promote the local retailers of the, their areas uh, they did that a similar thing in 2021 where sharukh khan uh, through the cadbury ad actually tried to promote the local retailers and this particular video that i'm trying to play tries to explain how they created that ad so that is a very very different kind of an experience do let me know if you can hear it and see it well sure is 
businesses and brands that suffered during the pandemic found their way back. But the smaller stores still suffer. This lockdown only has been a... Is, uh, uh, only audio is available, so you need to reshare your screen to that window. Okay, okay, I'll do that. tough phase of my life. I mean, is the video visible now? I have seen bad days, but this yes. was a birth. Last year, we helped small businesses through Diwali. So this year, we decided to bring it back. Presenting not just a category ad. This Diwali, we helped hundreds of small businesses by making India's biggest brand ambassador be their brand ambassador. This Diwali, you are in fashion of Emporium. And then, you will be shopping. And then, Empire Footwear. Listen to your name. Your stylish chashma will be able to take heaven eye operation. Siddhi Vinayak Electronics will be able to get a smartphone for 5,000 people. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, man. We used machine learning to recreate Shah Rukh Khan's face and voice to take the local store names in the ads. This Diwali, you have your Pass Wale choice of fashion say he. Pass Wale, Ajkal fashion say he. Royal fashion say he. Indy clothes say he. Pass Wale Lakshmi collection say he. This Diwali, you have. Different versions of the same ad with local store names were targeted as per the PIN code of the viewer, showing them only the nearby stores. But it is impossible to cover all the stores. So we gave the power to the people to create their own version of not just a Cadbury ad. Any small business owner could promote their stores through their own social media networks like WhatsApp forwards and other social media. हमारे आसपास की जो दुकानें हैं, उनकी दिवाली भी तो मीठी होनी चाहिए। Cadbury celebrations, not just a Cadbury ad. Oh, this one is amazing. So I'll come back to my presentation again. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to show through this ad was that, uh, you know, as I told about collaboration, uh, this was one experiment of um, amalgamating artificial intelligence, technology and advertising to deliver a very new kind of content. And it was very successfully done uh, by the brands. So uh, this is, again, uh, something which is uh, to be noted. There is one more, ad, one more, uh, few more ads I would like to play. This is one by Dove. I will share the screen again. So this ad by Dove, basically why I wanted to show this ad was that uh, Dove has always been trying to uh, show, uh, you know, different aspects of womanhood. And this ad talks about the very, very common problem of every household. But uh, why I want you to see this ad is because advertising is not just about promoting your product. When you connect with the consumers, when you connect with a cause, when you connect with an ideology, you go far beyond than promoting your product. And that's what Dove has been doing with different kinds of advertisement that it has trying uh, that it has brought in front of people and made people talk about certain issues uh, like you know uh, i remember one of the ad of dove in which uh, they had women of all colors and all sizes and uh, they all they wanted to project was that everyone is beautiful every skin is beautiful and every woman is beautiful so these are the kind of messages that dove has always tried to project and this ad also does something like that i would really like you to watch it
So as you can see in this particular advertisement, if you've noticed the Dove ads even before, they have never used any celebrity in their ad. They've always used common people with common faces to promote their product. That's how they have always tried to be different in the market. And that was also one soap which said it has a certain percentage of milk in the product. So that has been their USP over the years. But this particular campaign and these kind of campaigns for women and to support women is something that Dove has been doing for a long, long time and quite successfully. It has actually made people talk about certain things that they don't talk about. And if you saw the credits at the end of the ad, you must have seen that, uh, you know, they uh, particularly uh, the real people have been used in this video who have shared their real stories. So that this particular campaign connects more with the people and gives the message that everything is happening around you and it is time that you take a leap and stop the thing. Now, there are two more ads, but I would like to show, uh, show you just one. There is one Bhima jewelry ad, which you can find online. So all the students who are watching us can probably see this ad uh, online and see how it, uh, you know, actually shows the journey of a transgender through jewelry. So this is also one very interesting ad. But uh, the last one, because it is a bigger ad, I would like to share this one because I really liked it. And when I watched it, it gave me goosebumps. It is a true color ad. It has nothing to do with actually the product, but the way it relates with the product and the way it embeds, embeds the idea of the product with the video is very, very empowering. So I would like you to watch this one.
Now this is exactly the place where the product steps in, but the only place where the product steps in. Where, uh, otherwise the ad has a totally different meaning altogether. So uh, this ad actually is most of your time and energy spent in overthinking rather than taking action. There's a time to think and then there's time to act. Hi, my name is Dr. Nekha Dixit. I'm the author of the movie. I think uh, YouTube uh, need continued. So this ad, uh, particularly this one that I shared right now, gave me goosebumps again. And every time I watch it, it gives me goosebumps. So uh, why this ad is very important for you, uh, this Dove and Cadbury, you know, these ads are not promoting the brand or the product ad per se. It's not that they the product is not placed in the ad. It is there. But the concepts or the ideas or the uh, issues that they are addressing to 
is very, very connected to women, very, very connected to the society and everything that we face around us. So this makes advertising work nowadays because it engages the audience, it connects with the audience, it connects with the emotions of the audience and it makes people remember your brand. So uh, these are a few uh, uh, major things, you know, challenges that which uh, we need to uh, talk about or just, I'm just pointing them out that uh, from uh, the new technologies which are being used and all the uh, present day advertising trends that we've talked about, there are definitely certain challenges also that need to be addressed by the advertisers. First is puffery. We all know that the burger, you know, that we have in McDonald's or the French fries that we have in, at McDonald's, they don't look the same way when we have it at the outlet as they look in the advertisement. So there is a lot of puffery in creating the ads, in creating the visuals, in creating the content. There are, I will not say lies, but exaggerations definitely, which are there in the media and which are being used because of social media and also because we do not have very stringent social media laws. So there is a lot of puffery. There is a lot of information overload. We are receiving advertisements from everywhere, every brand at every place. So definitely we are saturated and it takes all the more effort for the advertisers to create the right content. Multiplicity of channels is also uh, our advantage and disadvantage as well because we have to think about engaging content on different platforms for different platforms and many of the times uh, that even increases our cost because we have to hire different people for different platforms. So that is also one of the challenge. Uh, changing technology, I've already addressed this during my previous slides. Increasing competition definitely remains a challenge forever when it comes to advertising. Then monitoring the competitive moves because now it's not only important to um, have, be good at what you're doing, but also be aware about what your competitor is doing, the kind of strategy they are using, the Instagram pro, uh, posts that they are having, the kind of offers they are giving to the people. Everything matters now in the advertising game. So it, uh, you have to be very stringent about watching your advertisers, uh, your competitors' moves. Next is breaking the noise by innovating techniques, which I've already discussed through my presentation. Identifying target audiences is also becoming very difficult, which I told you, because now we have very fluctuating choices and we are easily lured by good offers, good schemes, and we try out new brands. Uh, then people are tired of advertising. I already discussed that because of lack of any social media laws, there is a lot of disinformation and misinformation, which is floated by the competitors and that actually harms our reputation as a brand. Uh, then there is uh, this social media thing, the digital media thing has really brought in overnight crisis. The reputation that brands build over the years can be actually marred in one night only by one viral tweet of a user or a consumer or uh, anything of that sort or a video showing that there was uh, some insect in the food which was delivered or you know some pesticide in the cold drink. You've seen many brands facing that. So that is a big, big challenge for the brands nowadays, and they have to actually keep a crisis management team ready every time to handle such kind of crisis. Out of the box thinking is very rare, but that is the only way to survival. Uh, delivering com compelling content every time is very, very important for the brands to uh, stay, uh, to engage the consumers. And uh, these days, you know, you must have seen that several brands are using the current memes or the current songs or the current Instagram trends to keep uh, actually the audience hooked on to their branding messages. Uh, then uh, driving engagement across multiple channels is also a very, very challenging task. Uh, as I talked about data, we all know that now there are so many algorithms, so many service providers who can actually provide you with the data, which give you lots and lots of details about your consumers, their buying preferences, their use of media, the kind of content they consume, and even, even more filtered details about them. But what is challenging for the brands is to actually identify what is the kind of data they need. So identifying the data that you need to develop your strategies is a very, very different task and a very challenging task. Last, but very, very important thing is that most of the brands, especially after COVID, have drastically reduced their advertising budget. Now, that is a big, big challenge because uh, you have to advertise, you have to stay connected with the audiences, but the budgets are definitely going down. So you have to make sure that you are using the last penny to get the best results for the brand.
The last is key to success. What should we do to actually make everything work for the brands? One is be credible. Uh, next, be honest. Deliver on the promises that you have made to the customers. Focus on building relationships. That is the key to advertising from traditional times to today to digital times. It has been the key. It will always remain the key. Take advantage of low or no cost advertising. Very, very uh, possible in the current digital world. Influencer marketing also in many a times you get free of cost because the influencer wants your products to try it out and you don't spend much. So uh, that, is, uh, that is why influencer marketing is growing as well. Uh, be authentic in whatever you're saying. Try not to copy the other advertisements. Try not to copy other people's ideology. As I showed you the Dove example, similarly, the True Color example is also one which says, which is very, very authentic. So uh, in your, uh, sometimes, you know, it also becomes very um, challenging to be authentic. Like uh, you must have seen recently, many brands actually had to take down their ads because they tried to be authentic and people didn't like that. So that is also happening. And that is also a big challenge, but that doesn't make, that doesn't mean that you should st stop making experiments or you should stop trying out new things or being authentic in what you believe. Uh, be aware about your customers and their changing preferences. Very, very important to keep tap of the market. Uh, then you have to be visible. You have to be everywhere, as I told you earlier also. And you have to use analytics so that you have a very, very uh, firm and um, result-oriented strategic plan which you can implement to make your brand successful. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. And if there are any questions, we can definitely take that. Thank you so much, ma'am. You have covered everything. So uh, the one uh, major question I have is, so advertising, when we talk about advertising, it's yeah. really important to be with the uh, current scenario of the market and current scenario of the uh, you no know, audience. Yeah. Right. We also have with us uh, Amrish Saxena, sir. He's a journalist, anchor, and a very renowned uh, media uh, personnel. So, so good to have you here, sir. We definitely know, sir. We have heard him at so many platforms. Sir has been the leading force behind GMEC. We all know that. It's so happy to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Atanudek. I mean, I was listening uh, very patiently for the last one hour of your lecture. And uh, um, I mean, I am under the impression that I've learned everything under the sun as far as advertising is concerned. Thank you so much, so, sir. We have been learning from you for so many years. I mean, uh, though we haven't met, sir, but virtually uh, heard you at so many platforms. So, And it's actually a long journey of GMEC. That's mm. some moderators, we are speakers today. So that mm. definitely shows that it's a long, long journey we've covered. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is, and this is a big initiative which uh, has been taken along with the Media and Entertainment Skills Council uh, because this kind of lecture series is uh, really need of the hour, uh, particularly for all such people, all such students who are aspiring to be studying media or making a career in media in future. For them, having an understanding of uh, different aspects of media, be it journalism or advertising or public relations in one go, in one series, is really a big initiative for which we have to give credit to Media and uh, Entertainment Skills Council. And uh, at our level, at GMEC, whatever we are able to do with the uh, people around like uh, Dr. Tanu, uh, we have been able to provide all that input, which is really desired. And uh, uh, particularly, I will congratulate you, uh, Dr. Tanu, uh, listening uh, not only various aspects of advertising, because I uh, also believe that uh, advertising is the most uh, creative side uh, as compared to any other discipline in media. And the latest trend and the new trend that you talked about, and particularly the, the campaigns and the latest uh, things which are happening, the videos which you showed, uh, is really commendable. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, whatever you presented in your session. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was really wonderful covering all the aspects of new trends in uh, advertising. Uh, 
really really glad to attend this session we um and um, we are uh, we are privileged to have this session on our vidyadan portal i would also like to in, uh, inform about the upcoming session which is going to be on ethical issues in public relations because when we talk about even uh, dr dang has spoken about the vernacular language and slang and everything so we'll uh, be learning about the ethical issues in public relations by ms dina mukherjee to jab aapko pata lage ki so uh, with this thank you so much uh, dr dang and uh, amri sir for uh, being a part of this uh, webinar we are so happy to have you and uh, we'll meet you again soon tomorrow uh, with another session thank you so much take care thank you so much thanks a lot bye bye